Wow, look at this audience. I suppose everybody's here for the next point on our agenda. And I am very looking forward to this, since uh, we're going to get into our next MindSphere Open Space Challenge. Now, if you haven't heard of this, this is, this is something we've, we've also never done before. This is uh, our first time this year. And it was basically an open invitation to all developers out there um, around the world to submit their ideas, their solutions to use cases from our clients. Okay, so we asked some of our clients, hey, is there anything you're working on, currently working on, but don't have a solution to yet? Um, uh, would you like to present this on stage? And on the other side, we asked developers, hey, these are uh, the cases we have. Do you maybe have the solution so we can bring these two together? Now, we're going to do this, like, you know what, from, from, from startup shows maybe, we'll have a jury with the client in the jury and also uh, three or four other competent gentlemen um, who will be evaluating the pitches you will see here by the different teams on stage now throughout the next hour. And this is going to be really, really interesting. So if you can still grab a seat, get one now, and, and otherwise, um, um, just stay where you are. It's going to be really interesting. So once again, the Minds for Open Space Challenge today here for the second time, our client uh, Diefenbacher, and um, we're also going to be giving you the chance to vote for the best solution. So on the one side, we have the jury evaluating the different solutions. On the other side, we have you as the audience here and also watching at home. We'll also have the possibility to vote. Go to Siemens.com slash vote now to vote for your favorite team. I'll be introducing the teams in a while as they come up here on stage, uh, but we'll take it through here step by step. So first off, I'd like to introduce here, ladies and gentlemen, our client this, uh, today here from Diefenbacher. Please welcome Herr Kuhnekampf. Nice to have you. So, Herr Kuhnekampf, you brought a quick video I think we're going to show now, and uh, you, maybe you can explain a bit about uh, what your company is about. Yeah, good, good morning. Good morning. Um, my name is Rolf Königkamp. I'm head of the business unit industrial automation at Diefenbachers. And we are a family sized company with founded 1873 with about 1,700 employees. We have two business units. Uh, one is the production of lines which produce fiber reinforced plastics, for example, for BMW. And that film, you see a line where we produce. Uh, carbon fiber reinforced plastics for the new 7 series BMW in a wet molding process with some robots. This is a press where we press in this case door slides or <coughs> roof bows. Um, yes, these parts are coming out of the process and are part of the body shell of the car. So the complete car is getting lighter, about 130 kilos. Um, yes, this is one invention at BMW. On the other business unit, we are in wood-based panel production lines with large lines to produce things like that. IKEA is a big customer, of course, and there we, you know, we chip wood, dry it, and press it to boards. Uh, they are high speed. These are large lines with four football or soccer places size, things like that. And you see, yes, this is a line which was one of the first lines with S7-1500 automation um, <clears throat> near Nuremberg in Fleider Neumarkt. Uh, yes, you see panels like that, which you can buy or you in furniture or other things. So I think this gives us a nice overview of what Diefenbacher does. Maybe you can give us an idea of what you were looking for uh, when you heard about this challenge. Uh, obviously, you have something where you don't have a solution yet, and you're looking for the perfect solution. So, so tell us about the, uh, the Yeah, As you can imagine, these lines are quite complex to maintain, and we have the idea to make main maintenance easier on that people who walk around a, m a motor, which makes a, s a funny noise, for example, they take their smartphone and say, okay, I take that as a ticket, scan the QR code, give a short message, something like WhatsApp, which gives good fun, which people does, and you get directly a feedback that somebody read that message and that ticket, and mm -hmm. somebody's working on that. So it must be exciting for you also now, as, uh, of course, part of the Ifenbacher and part of the jury, to see what our teams have prepared. Yeah, we are really curious and excited what you will present. And yeah, my colleagues at home are watching at the moment. And yeah, we will discuss and Wave. invite, obviously, some of 
you uh, to our headquarters to Eppingen. So I'd like to ask you to take a seat right in the middle yeah. of the jury. Thank, Thank you. you very much uh, for being here. And I'd like to introduce the rest of our jury here, really quick here, on uh, my, to, to my right, uh, Mr. Daniel Kronen, ladies and gentlemen. He is the so-called pitch professor, a man who knows what he's talking about. Uh, he, he is also an entrepreneur, um, the founder of uh, a couple of startups, lecturer, um, just really passionate about the whole thing. Great that you're here today. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Also with us here today, ladies and gentlemen, is Stefan Stang. Since uh, everything here is also uh, going to be connected to MindSphere, he is the expert from MindSphere and uh, will also be helping us uh, out with some questions and, of course, his, his competences. Mr. Kuhnekamp, we just met, and also from Siemens, Mike Falken. Mike, maybe you can tell us a bit about the uh, relationship between Siemens and your client, Diefenbacher. Yeah, thank you very much. As yeah, Mr. Kunnekamp already mentioned, Diefenbacher is one of the first users of the S7-1500 in a huge plant and has developed uh, so far uh, a very good solution for that. Is a power user of the TIA portal mm -hmm. and now we want to go to the next step, to the digitalization. Talking about the next step. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, talking about the next step, we're going to bring our teams on stage here. I'm going to tell you real quick how it's going to run down. Each team has 15 minutes, including maximum of seven minutes of presentation time. After that, eight minutes of Q&A by our jury. Just once again for the teams, don't forget it. You're presenting your product here. Give it all you got. Go for it. Give us your passion. Show us why your idea is the best idea for Diefenbacher. All right? Don't, and forget about the audience. They're not here. All right? This is you. You know what you're doing. So I'm going to bring up our first team here, um, Xitazo. And uh, please welcome Clara Forna and R Christian Heinrich and Richard Nordsee. Welcome. Clara. Nice to have you. Hi, Chris. Welcome. Thanks. Welcome. So, just real quick here, maybe you want to introduce yourselves. Xitazo, did I pronounce that correctly? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, Clara, tell us a bit about what you came up with or a bit about your, uh, uh, your company, first of all. Um, we work uh, at Xitazo. We, we stay in Augsburg mm -hmm. with um, around about 100 employees. Okay. Uh, founded in 2012, so we are a more or less young company. Yeah. And um, yes. What exactly do you do there? I am a UX UI designer. Okay. So we are quite interdisciplinary. <laughs> <laughs> and it, yeah. obviously, yeah. you have fun together here. <laughs> yes, How is it working in yeah. this team? Yeah, it's uh, great fun to work in this team. It's all, we have a great culture at Xita, so it makes really fun to work there. What, what is your job? Uh, at the moment, I am working as a product owner, mm -hmm. but uh, the last years I was software developer, so I switched to be near uh, the uh, customer and uh, get the requirements uh, written down. And uh, we work with a Scrum process, so we have a very near contact there. And tell us about your, your position. Well, I'm mostly working as a software developer, but uh, also working towards a PhD, so we also focus a bit on research and uh, yeah, to get a really holistic approach to uh, high quality software uh, development. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the stage to you guys now. Like I said before, seven minutes presentation time. After that, eight minutes of question fire. Ready for okay. Xitazo, go for it. Okay, so hello, first of all, thank you for having us. We're really happy uh, to present our concept today to you. And um, yeah, as we were thinking of our ideas, the second question was uh, how can we present these ideas in the best way in the best in the simplest way, way to you and um, we decided to make a video which we are going to show you right now and I won't lose much more words just enjoy it will explain our concept <laughs> Meet Michael and his workplace, a factory in which multiple machines produce wood-based panels. If, God forbid, a problem should occur, he jumps right into the action fixing it, even though sometimes searching for documentation is quite unnerving. This allows the factory to function properly. The management, however, has no proper way of knowing what he did, leaving it at a disadvantage in the highly competitive world we live in. To address this issue, 
Michael is equipped with a smartphone and an app. He goes to work just as before but slightly happier. Now a problem occurs and Michael scans the QR code of the faulty machine or part. Based on MindSphere, the app supports him with useful suggestions for the problem description and category. The category is used to narrow down the problem descriptions. Michael can simply choose the correct one. He only needs to assign a priority to complete the ticket creation. After all is done and dusted, the ticket is transferred into the MindSphere. But what is that? Michael receives points for creating a ticket, which is one of four actions rewarded. They will be explained in the next scene. Because Michael does not want to alter his workflow, he can directly process the created ticket. The app is able to provide documentation, technical drawings and other media relevant thanks to content linked in MindSphere. It is even able to offer solution suggestions contributed in the past. Michael decides on a solution contributed by Kurt. However, it seems that Kurt was in a hurry and some parts are hard to understand. He decides to contact Kurt through the app to solve the problem together. After solving it, they upload a video thoroughly explaining their solution. Each of them is rewarded for uploading the solution, the processing of the ticket and of course for their collaboration. Because Michael just overtook Henry by solving his 44th ticket, he is awarded the Fixing Fox badge. The same happened to Kurt in the support category. From now on, he is known as Assisting Ant. All categories aggregate into a rank that reflects Michael's commitment and usage of the ticketing system. If their collaboration would have been unsuccessful, Michael would have had the option to pass the ticket on to a third party or even Diefenbacher directly. To discover what is to do next, Michael opens the overview screen. There he sees all the plant's machines with a virtual health indicator. Michael observes that machine 3 is of low virtual health. Consequently, he clicks on it to take a closer look at the tickets linked to this machine. He sees one ticket created by an intelligent service in MindSphere that the service is necessary. The virtual health of machines is linked to the amount of open tickets correlated with time. Tickets can be created by users of the app, the PLCs that control machines and intelligent services in MindSphere. This is Michael's chance to earn more rewards for the processing of tickets and increase the machine's health. Consequently, he hurries to work. The plant operator Kunigunde contently notes that now much more tickets are created than previously. This allows her to aggregate the collected knowledge to gain insights and predict maintenance intervals without costly retrofitting the machines with sensors and the like. With the detailed documentation of the worker's workflow, she can discover bottlenecks to ease plant operation. Machst du weiter? Hm? Muss ich noch eins weiter? Ja. Yeah. As we have seen in the previous four scenes, everything revolves around MindSphere. And uh, enticed by a threefold um, uh, gamification concept, the users create uh, content and enrich content about machines, uploading it to the MindSphere, where it is of help uh, to other users that also face similar problems. And together they can collaborate and keep the machines alive. And also what this allows is that the management has the opportunity to aggregate the knowledge, to gain insights, uh, into uh, yeah, bottlenecks and thereby um, improve the plant operation. Yeah, and before uh, we head on to your questions right now, we would like to point out some aspects, a few more aspects. Um, we consciously decided to keep the concept at a high level of abstraction so that we theoretically or ideally um, can step in contact, in closer contact with Diefenbacher to adjust and refine everything and um, as a user experience designer I have to say that we would also of course put the user in the center um, of our work but for that we have to work closer together. Yeah, exactly. The, the next steps would be to consider your vision and our concept to get a uh, common idea of the, the project and where the, 
we have to go and uh, we would uh, define the scope of the, the first MVP together so we can bring up uh, real fast the first uh, the first software, so can we in small iterations develop it and get the feedback from um, Michael and Kunigunde to get the best for you. And we are looking forward to, for the, the new Mindsphere technologies coming up and uh, bring it into this uh, project. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Team Sikitazo. We can give them a big round of applause, maybe, for presenting here. Thank you. And I got to tell you, I don't know about you, but I really like the effort they put into that animation. That looked fantastic. What does our jury have to say, and what are your questions? Well, thank you very much, uh, first. And I really like the, the very creative approach. But I do have two questions. Um, so did I understand correctly you scaled up to 100 people in five years? Six. Yes. yes. Yeah. Six years. Um, but I also understand none of you are founders, right? No. But where are your founders now, and how will the support be from the founding team? Uh, the, the founding team is now the, the CEO of the company. And um, we have a lot of Scrum teams in, in the company, and so we could uh, bring up a Scrum team to do this. Maybe we start with three people or four, and then we can scale up. Uh, depends on how... Yeah. And how, how close was what you pitched from your core product? We what? have... Yeah. Yep. We have uh, not a product. We are making a custo a software customized for the customers. But we have experience in ticketing systems and uh, machinery and plant uh, software. Thank you. I can see you're grabbing the microphone. Mr. Kuhnekamp, please. Yeah, do you have already experience with machinery companies, yes. with yeah. Um, yeah. process industry, yeah. things like that? Yes. In former times, we uh, get the, uh, got data directly from the PLC, put it in uh, some uh, C sharp REST services, put uh, uh, Angular application on it. So we have the whole stack, and now we can integrate Mindsphere and uh, do uh, collect the data there and work on this. Yeah, which is also interesting from a security perspective because they have a quite uh, thought through security model, and yeah. Any other well, questions? Well, I just have to ask. We just heard Mindsphere. Okay, Mike, go for it. You're grabbing the mic. Um, I have one question. As thanks for the presentation. I think it was also very nice uh, from my view. Um, you have also like a own currency. You give points for people who create tickets. Do you see a risk that people just create tickets to get points, even though there is not really a standstill or an issue with the machine, just to get more points, to get rewarded, to get a better status in the company? Mm. Of course, that's a danger, but I think you can't create a ticket when there's nothing wrong. So you uh, can't say, okay, there is uh, some color of, <laughs> of the machine. The machine doesn't look good or something like that. I think um, that would be uh, ridiculous for the one who creates the ticket. Yeah, but so you always have to trust your uh, colleagues at the end. It doesn't matter which system you create, if there is enough uh, criminal potential there, it always can be uh, Maybe that's misused. fun to do it for one time or two, but I don't think that you would do it in a, in a, great, in a great team, in a big team, uh, several times. And Stefan. Yeah. yeah. First of all, thanks. Very great presentation. I, I liked it uh, a lot. Uh, I would like to get a little bit more information from you uh, how this is now really or how do you want to link this from the machine uh, we heard about TIA portal uh, how do you want to link this actually what I have seen is more a knowledge type of database a system where you can handle tickets and knowledge sharing yeah. uh, how do you want to do this yeah exactly this is the point <laughs> we have to get in contact with Stephen Bacher because I heard about uh, you're using the SC, uh, S7 1500 so we can directly use their mind connect bring it in the cloud and the time series there we can analyze in the first step bring the assets there and when then we maybe start with some QR codes on the machine scanning them and have the file based uh, information maybe is this the, the first shot first approach but later on, maybe. Yeah, um, as far as we know, uh, something like a graph-based uh, database is also planned to be incorporated yeah. into Mindsphere. And that would be one option to represent uh, the relations between the different parts of the ticket and so on. And 
because I think if, if you look at the whole thing to gain knowledge of your machinery, um, you could maybe argument that the tickets uh, are kind of a time series, but I don't think this is a feasible approach. And therefore, uh, we, we would go with a, with a more file system uh, based solution or the, the, the graft uh, based one. Yeah, or in the end of the year there will be the, the data yeah. lake and then we can uh, use the structured uh, data there and then, but for the first moment it would go like this, yeah. And you can go for, far, further, you can uh, do e-commerce with this ticketing system as well, You're scanning there and then you have idea, okay, the part is missing, a spare part uh, is uh, ordered because you know oh, it's broken or something like this, you can integrate everything. Where do you see the main advantage of using a cloud-based system? So, why MindSphere? Why not on-premise? Yeah, for security reasons, for example, and it's already there. You have not the, the, the pro yeah, if there's a problem on the customer side, maybe he can uh, bring the ticket to, to the Diefenbacher experts at the end. And it's, yeah, you have one big lake, or uh, big uh, data, Base, knowledge yeah. base. Yeah, and the customer doesn't have to care about the infrastructure and so on. I mean, this is the whole point of cloud solutions that, uh, yeah, you take work away from your end customer. And highly scalable, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I see the no disadvantages at the moment, f especially for uh, now with the v, uh, V3 version, it's really open and we can, yeah, it's great to work with this. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you also for Thanks. the questions. Great. And uh, thank you guys for presenting on stage. Xitazo um, will be around also in the open space area. Yep. So <laughs> once again, this is your applause. Xitazo, thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. We'll see what the jury decides later on. Very nice first presentation, my opinion. And just so you know, all teams are available here in the open space area for further questions. If you would like uh, to know anything else, um, you have your own questions, they'll be here throughout the entire day with their team here for you. So moving on to our next presentation, I'd like to welcome from Connectavo, here are Eric Adolfs and Laurence Schröder. Welcome. Nice Hi. Welcome. Hi. Gentlemen, welcome on stage. Nice to have Thanks you with us. So, maybe you can tell us a bit about your company, Connectavo. When did you start? What are your positions? Where are you from? Sure. Sure. Um, I'm Eric. We're, together with Lawrence, we started Connectavo in the end of 2015. So, around now two and a half years. Uh, we're in total 12 people. Um, we are based in Berlin. And we started off with the one mission to make maintenance more intelligent and especially empower the technician at the machine with more and uh, more accurate information. What is, your, what is your position? What do you do, actually? Uh, I do mostly the product side. Okay. So in developing the product, thinking the product further. So that's mostly my position. And your teammate here? And vice versa. I'm responsible for making sure that the product actually reaches the customer. So I'm more in marketing and sales. All right. I'm not going to take any more of your time. You're ready to go? Yes, absolutely. Connectavo. Thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, we're happy to introduce Connectava to you. Um, a short introduction of the company, you've already seen we are about two and a half years old. Um, 12 people based in Berlin and we are completely focused on maintenance software. Um, because historically we've been a spin-off of a larger software company where we found out that there's a big need for this such a software, but existing solutions are not really up to the mark what we've seen. So, um, historically, actually, Pebble and Fuchs, right around the corner, has been our very, very first customer and partner because that's how we found out that industrial software is not really what we used to on the consumer side. So, that's quite a coincidence. And last year and two years ago, we were right over there on their booth. Um, and uh, other partners and companies um, I can introduce you to later. Um, already, right now, I would like to invite you. We are right over there. So, if you have questions later on, happy to answer them. So let's dig in right now at the Diefenbacher case. Um, and first of all, I would like to start with a little introduction of how we understood the case at hand. Um, we basically uh, drilled it down to three parts. First of all, um, we understood that um, the case at hand requires basic maintenance tracking. So you need to be aware in a transparent way what has been done, what needs to be done, what's the history. Part one. I think so far many systems can do that. Second part, especially what we you required, it should be a fun experience. So, for my thinking, ideally people love to do the documentation work later on 
it's not like a bothersome experience that you need to do still on top. And last but not least, joining this together in a platform where users on the clients, Diefenbacher as a machine manufacturer and possibly other parties could join, like an external service provider could jointly work together. And this is um, our proposed solution. What we do is the Connectavo maintenance portal. It's a central interface that combines all the different aspects that are related to maintenance work in an industrial plant in one portal. And it's available as an app and as a web portal. Very important to us is that it's centralized, keeps all the information at hand, and is easy to use. So this is where we apply our historical knowledge and experience in uh, software development. Such a portal as we offer it um, has three basic advantages. First of all, it helps on daily routines. So the basic steps that I will dig into a little bit deeper in a second is about planning, operation, documentation and reporting. So the whole process digitized in, in the portal. On top of this comes a little bit of intelligence support. We call it on the one hand contextual intelligence, so giving hints what needs to be done. But also, for example, what you just asked a second ago about linking data, for example, from the TIA portal into the machine to, to sense what's the machine status. And last but not least, as a user-focused solution, it should be easy to use and it should be quick to use, which saves costs for the, for the company. So let's go in. We have planning, operation, documentation, and reporting. More in detail, first of all, if we start out in the planning phase, we have work orders. This is how we call it. Any sort of ticket action that needs to be done, we call it a work order. And I'll just show you some, some graphical examples here in the app, but I'll can you show you uh, day details a little bit later. So we have all the assets in here, basically a tree structure of all the assets, plant machinery that's in there, and uh, corresponding work orders. So let's say you have one work order that you don't want to miss. You can either pre-schedule it, you can enter it manually, or you have, you have a solution to dig into some data and, for example, use an anomaly detection to sense what's the right point to do this. Once you're in the operation phase and you know what kind of work order you need to do, you will have all the details here at hand. Um, but more importantly, uh, we believe that it's not enough just to know what you need to do, but thinking about how you need to do it. So there's always context. Maybe and in the case at hand, I need to do an oil change, which I've never done before. It always has been my colleague, but he's on vacation right now. So how do I find out? I can either go around and ask my colleagues. I could check in the handbook or rely on a Google search. We believe all of this isn't very efficient. Or you can call up Diefenbacher. Might be another option. <laughs> Um, but it should be right available. So we have an extra tab for contextual information. And we have an anomaly, um, uh, sorry, an ontology in the background to sense what information is relevant for the job at hand. So it scrolls through all the handbooks that are attached, it scrolls through historical information, but it goes also through external databases. So as you can see over here, you can right away pull up a previous completed work order and see what your colleague has done in the past. It's, it's pretty easy, it just takes the two tabs. So from that onwards, um, you might want to go to the documentation. Now you completed your job, you tap on it once, so it starts in the background, the timer starts. When did I actually do this? Second tab, and you go to the completion phase. You can just go in here, say maybe in an hour from now, I have everything done. I can tap my checklist, pretty easy. And last but not least, if I want, I do an exhaustion signature. And that's it. The whole work order is completed. So this is how we believe it should be an easy and fun to use way. So it probably took me like 10, 15 seconds uh, here on stage to do this, including, for example, the ability to scan a QR code of a machine to, to know which part I'm, I'm working on or to take a picture uh, to document it. And taking all of this together, if you use it over time, uh, compared to Excel sheets, other software solutions, you will have a really interesting pool of data because you know what kind of machine happened at which point in time on which asset. So you can use this as a basis for a continuous improvement process. You can start thinking about what are constructual flaws, maybe issues that always break down because you can have a report right up, pulled, uh, pull up and um, then dig deeper, for example, analyze together with the machine manufacturer Diefenbacher, which 
maintenance work is very critical and you might want to have the manufacturer coming in and order it right via the portal and which more basic jobs maybe you want to do yourself. And all of this, again, is based in the cloud. Um, it's a solution we currently offer in OTC, AWS, and Exum. We're very happy to talk about the MindSphere solution. That's why we're here today. Um, and uh, usually, um, yeah, we have the basic steps taken, but we also put a big emphasis on security. So it's end-to-end -end encrypting, including all the data in our database. So um, to sum it up, um, we have the maintenance tracking included, basic part. We have a fun experience, what we believe is very quick and easy to do. And last but not least, we have the platform ability to integrate machine manufacturers right as Riefenbacher and the ability for you to offer services or spare parts right inside. Thanks a lot. Finish their presentation <laughs> right on time. So one Thank big you. round of applause for the team of Connect Connectavo, Thank which you. are Eric and Lorenz. Our second team here for our client, Diefenbacher. Jury, go for it. Thanks, gentlemen. Um, first question for me, tell us a little bit about your company and how is it financed? Who owns the company? Uh, so I think we are a classical startup, so which means that we as owners own the majority there. Uh, but we are also a venture startup, which means that we took on venture capital from, from the get-go. And this is also how we finance, how we're also growing um, the, the traditional way. And, and any affiliations with your spin-off company? Uh, no. Yep. Oh. And one thing I was kind of, I didn't quite see is one of the challenges was also to add the whole fun component. Mm. The, the fun part mm -hmm. to, to gamify. Tell us a little bit about your background in gamification. Um, yeah, the, as I said, the, we have a background in software development, hands-on. That's what we did uh, before we started Connect Half two and a half years ago. Um, and we've been working, for example, on VR applications, on consumer applications. Um, we believe in this context of industrial maintenance, it should be fun to use, but it shouldn't be a game that you play because it's a very serious context and it sh you should still be aware that whatever you do there has a critical influence, for example, on uptime and on production quality. So we want to have it user-friendly, but not playing as a game. Good answer. Gentlemen, who else would have a question? Mr. Kuhnekamp, please. Yeah. Yeah, the act, um, aspect of multi-tenancy, yeah. Bringer, how do you think about bringing such a work order to Diefenbacher? What would be the process of that? Yeah, um, let's make an, uh, a specific example. Let's say maybe a production worker sends an issue, so he could go to the next station or go to the next tablet and not send it right away a work order, but just a notification. That work order would go, in, uh, this uh, notification would go into a pool where maybe the, the head of maintenance at your client's plans can check it and then reroute it, either to an external team, maybe the electricians, maybe the mechanical team, or right away to Diefenbacher. And this, from this pool onwards, um, let's say it goes to Diefenbacher. Diefenbacher can have a very specific um, uh, uh, access role within the portal that's always aligned with the client. Some clients allow more visibility and more insights, some don't. Um, and then you could, would get an email from the portal saying, this is a specific service request that my customer sent me, and that will probably go into some sort of, of, of customer service team, I guess, at Diefenbacher, where you can then um, use the data, maybe export it into your field service management solution, and right away go there to schedule time. Mike, please. Um, you are talking a lot about work orders, so that means so the technician goes to the plant and sees exactly I need to change the bearings, I need to do something. Yeah. Um, if he comes there and he finds a problem that he doesn't know, in your concept, is there also a way where this technician gets guided to the root cause of the problem? Like, for example, the motor makes a funny noise, yeah. nobody knows what it is, and then um, that without, let's say, a specific work order, but how is the system also? Uh, giving guidance how to come to the work order, what to need, what needs to be done uh, concrete in this step. Mm -hmm. the, the 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 basic concept is uh, what you sense correctly. There is so a knowledge database in, in in a way we call it in contextual intelligence in the background, and you can access it either if you entered a work order and via the context of the work order you will uh, pull up some information. The other option, if you don't specify a work order in the first place, but you just want to access the information that's in the system, we call it Connect Harvard Genius. So there's an extra field where you can enter um, some keywords. You have an autocomplete function, and it will pull up some information that might be relevant for the, for the issue that you have right there. So also, for example, from the protocol, you can get past work orders. 
through this search. So you, is, does it answer your question? You're not looking convinced. <laughs> You're not sure, right? <laughs> no, the thing is, um, if you need, really need to do troubleshooting, so you don't know what's there, yeah. and you can have a lot of information from the plant, mm -hmm. and how can you use this information, let's say, to get it into the troubleshooting and then create the work order? Yeah, what you would do, um, you probably have a basic idea of what might be the issue at hand. You would enter these as a keyword inside this connectivity, as we call a genius search functionality, and it will pull up information that's related to these keywords. So this could be protocols from previous work orders. There could be a database, for example, about error root causes, or there could also be something that's uh, somewhere hidden in the handbook on page 500. Um, if I want to show you an example, maybe right afterwards, I'll, I'll be happy to, to show you specifically how it works. Good answer. <laughs> Mine's yeah. Um, I have one question from my side. Um, I have seen the drawing with the machine and all these uh, other devices on it. With what type of data sources you are, you are dealing typically besides the work order itself? And how is your concept look like to connect this into MindSphere? So we are always distinguishing between two types of data sources. So there's text data and there's uh, numeric data. So sensor readings, whatever readings from the machine. So for text data, we either connect to a document management system or store them ourselves um, and access these or search these, access these and make it accessible on the app. So the second part, the uh, sensor data, there for us is the, uh, you know, the concept, also the, the, the feature that we have is anomaly detection that we either store them ourselves and pull out the information or we just interface something like MindSphere, something like also directly the machine that the machine can create a work order within Connectavo without having any sort of uh, you know, human uh, activity required for this. Uh, so there our system is open to interface you know, whatever database um, would make sense in that case. So work orders could also be created, if I understood this correctly, by the system itself, just Correct. based on historic data or whatever you have. Or very simple, if you have an HMI currently at a machine, it might say that you have to refill oil or so. This, instead of showing it at the display, you can just uh, transfer it directly to Connectavo, get your message on your smartwatch and go there. So you could cut out even this kind of uh, media issue that you have in the, in the transfer of information. A totally different question. What's your company's next milestone? What's the next thing that's going to happen? Um, <laughs> I would say two parts. Um, uh, we are in the phase where we, are, we completed three, three venture rounds. You probably sense it on the, on the second page, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> so we're growing currently. Our next phase is expanding our market reach. We're currently very focused on, on Germany. We have some clients in Austria and Switzerland. And right now we're expanding into additional industries um, and additional geographies on the so to say, sales side. Um, also forging additional partnerships currently. Um, on the other side, uh, our product has been in use for about one and a half years, um, but we have like two or three special things in the pipeline that will launch in summer, and that's going to be the next phase for the product. Thank you. So looking at the time, I guess uh, that's it again. That's how fast 15 minutes uh, can pass. So thank you very much. Connectable, Thanks. ladies and gentlemen, Eric you. and Laurens. Your Thanks. applause. Thank you. I enjoyed the presentation. I'm looking forward to the next one. By the way, if you would like to vote for your team, you can do so after every presentation. Just go to Siemens.com slash vote now. This uh, applies to our audience, but also to our viewers at home. Just go to the website. We have some QR codes laying out here that will lead you directly to the voting possibility. Now, moving on with our third team to present in the MindSphere Open Space Challenge from Fifth Industry. Please welcome Robert Harms, Frank Petau, and Sebastian Schumann. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Right. Gentlemen, nice to have you. All right. Looking good, fresh. Are you guys excited? We are. You are. So tell us a bit about uh, your company, Fifth, uh, Fifth Industry is what Fifth it's called? Fifth Industry it's called, yeah. And um, where, where are you based? Uh, I'm based in Nuremberg in a tiny village, and these guys are based in Berlin. Okay. And yeah, we are still Siemens employees, and here, um, yeah, trying out our Diefenbach case, and then try to found our company. Look at that. Interesting. So, so what is your, your position? Um, I'm, I used to work 10 years in IT, so rather for IT architecture, IT development. Architecture, That's okay. my part. Okay. And uh, let's move on. Well, I'm also in factory, uh, factory planning and factory operations, 
and uh, focusing on digital transformation and topics of new work and cultural change. All right. Have you, have you ever done anything like this before, pitched in front of uh, a jury? Uh, well, it happens in daily life. You have to present and pitch for your ideas, so that's uh, nothing too uncommon. But this time and today, we pitch for our idea and our approach to make uh, digitalization alive with the Diefenbacher maintenance app. We're looking forward to your presentation. Make the most out of it. 15 minutes for you now. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Hello. Many people think when they hear IoT or digitalization about connecting devices uh, or automate processes. We, however, believe that the people are in the center of interest because we believe that uh, digitalization in the 3.0 can unleash the full potential and uh, the power of the people in terms of self-organization, self-determination, and all these new work uh, topics. And even better if they work in networks, networks with machines and networks with people. And actually, we believe in a maintenance environment, um, productivity will be increased the more you work in networks, the more you collaborate. And in order to bring those patterns that we learn from social uh, or web 2.0 uh, activities and uh, social media together with the business needs and the IoT data um, from the MindSphere, for instance, uh, we believe that we have to design any application with our five design maxims. First of all, we talk about transparency, about ongoing tasks, about ongoing activities. We talk about smart information when you need it and where you need it. We talk about collaboration uh, without boundaries, uh, without hierarchies. We talk about constant communication um, with the community and we talk about appreciation uh, with feedback and rewards. So how does it translate into an application for Diefenbacher to, uh, um, to, to improve the customer uh, value for them? Well, we, have, uh, we are implementing a digital app for a mobile device, and um, it all starts with simple, crea uh, simple ticket creation. Any ticket creation needs oh, to be as cool, simple yeah. as a Facebook post. You just quickly scan a QR code, uh, you put a voice message or a text message to it, and you add a photo if you want to, and your ticket is created. That's it. And to actually manage your tickets, we want to uh, work with something called a Kanban board. We have seen the Kanban board logics in IT industry a lot. We have seen it in our experience. We are all from production environment as a very powerful tool. So you can simply swipe intuitively through uh, the different sections, see all the tickets, and work on it. If you click on a ticket, you will get quick information to all the ticket information. Uh, ticket details as such as problem descriptions, um, such as location of the machine and everything you need. But you also might need some spare parts, and you can directly go out of the ticket view and order from a relevant spare part catalog um, the things you need. And even more importantly, if you have, and here's where MindSphere comes into, into, into the game, when you have some IoT connected, MindSphere connected devices, you can just directly from the ticket enter into, um, into a dashboard where you see the most important parameters. Okay. You might just click into the fleet manager, and if you have an automatically triggered ticket, you can just um, as, uh, 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 pull the data from the machine into your ticket. As a maintenance uh, personnel, you're usually not alone. You need probably to collaborate on certain topics with the other experts or with the machine manufacturer. So we have a very simple way to put a voice message, a text message directly to the um, machine manufacturer. You can add your IoT data to this ticket and get a quick reaction from the, um, from the, machine, operator, uh, from the ma machine manufacturer. You can also invite a colleague uh, to help you with a ticket. So you assign a ticket just to a colleague in a co-creation situation. And as I said, talking about colleagues at the community of uh, technicians, operators, and managers, they all have to communicate using an activity stream, or they can communicate uh, using an activity stream discussing with other people. And it's just as simple as using consumer apps as you are used to with WhatsApp. You can put likes, 
and you can even reward somebody uh, with an internal token system that we develop. And this is, um, in this kind of ecosystem, this should be an, a gamification-like ecosystem, you will have your own profile in which you can uh, put your expertise, in which you can uh, tell what you are capable of, and you can see your own statistics or even your token balance. And talking about the token, this is kind of a new feature that we want to implement, um, similar to blockchain-based tokens, where you have a reward system. You can assign a ticket to a value, and once you solve the ticket, you will receive the token. If you are a maintenance operator or manager, uh, you can tip somebody with a token if you have great service, if you are quicker than uh, thought. And this is a way to incentivize the whole community to be an active participant. So to sum it all up, um, we try to combine the business needs on the one hand with the social, uh, with the patterns of digitalization as we see it um, everywhere around in order to empower people, in order to organize uh, so they can organize themselves. And we want to have something which is fun to use and an, uh, creates an active community and pro of productivity. Um, just a quick word to our team. We've all been uh, working for more than 10 years in a factory environment as factory managers, as uh, factory planners, and as um, IoT development. And um, one of our purposes is really to bring a new work culture into the shop floor. And every app that we will make will be based on this kind of um, philosophy. Okay, that's pretty much it. We are open for questions. If you want to have a look at our mock-up, or a video explaining the app a little bit deeper, you can just um, quickly scan the barcode. And if you want to meet us, we will be at the booth after the pitch. Thank you. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Fifth industry, and the applause comes naturally, and uh, we're excited to hear what the jury wants to know. So, Daniel. Thank you. Thanks, gentlemen. Um, quick question. Did I understand you are still currently all working for Siemens? Yes, that's correct. And what's going to happen with the company? So you're going to the Siemens resign today <laughs> and found it, or what's going to happen? Um, no, Siemens. I think is a great company. Uh, they can afford Seemingly. people, three people leaving. The next step for us is um, Siemens is also setting up its next 47 uh, Techstar accelerator program, and uh, the next milestone for us is to applicate for this, and uh, then let's see how it goes, and then we would form a spin out or spin off. Okay, and we saw a mock-up today. Yes. How long would it take, assuming the customer says, that's amazing, I want it, how long would it take until we have a 1-0 of it? Um, minimum lovable product, uh, I think with the basic features, scanning the barcode, raising the ticket, the Kanban board, pulling a ticket. I mean, that's something uh, we can do uh, within four to six weeks. Okay, and last question for me. Um, what are your responsibilities? You're all going to found... I've seen you're responsible for social media, so that's cool. But besides that, <laughs> what, are your, what are your responsibilities? Um, yeah, as said, um, I used to work in IT, so probably IT development, IT architecture, and driving, connecting the, to the Mindsphere will probably rather be my uh, responsibility. I'm rather in business development um, and trying to innovate the technologies we use, uh, just as, for instance, the blockchain-based systems or other technology-based systems. My responsibility is also um, coming from the user role. Uh, I've worked as a factory manager, I work as a head of technology, so I know what are the needs and the requirements uh, in IoT for manufacturing and production logistics. And uh, besides that, I also have a strong passion for coding and development, uh, cloud solutions and cloud architecture, so that's also something I see my role in. Thank you, and I've seen you grab the microphone. Go for it. Great presentation, thank you very much. Uh, how important do you see the aspect that you get a direct feedback? So that guy who initiated the ticket that he sees one hour later, some, somebody is taking care of that. Yep. Like there's two little green dots on and WhatsApp, what we see. Uh, that that is extremely important. Actually, you should see it in real time. One hour is far too long. If my machine is broken down, I have a problem. And that is often where it comes on shop floor. People start calling, using the phone, what really is the issue, email ping pong starts and so on. So really with our app, we want to see 
I, as an operator, submit a ticket, and I can see somebody pulled it. I can see who has taken the ticket. I can contact him. He can give me feedback over the app. Can you be a little more verbose on the problem? Can you send me some pictures all over the app? And so that we really have an interaction and a connectivity between the person who has a problem and the maintenance guy and Diefenbacher, who comes also in the chain, in the escalation chain, if the problem is more severe. A typical problem in our current uh, working environment is all those email chains, those phone calls that you cannot connect to. And if you have everything in one single communication channel with quick feedback, then you have uh, the whole transparency of what's going on. So at any time, in, uh, at any time I can just click, click, quick, uh, click the ticket and see the history. And this is what makes it uh, so um, agile in the end uh, to be quickly in reaction and what's happening. I can also see the history. I can see has somebody raised a ticket before? What has been the issue earlier? Can I solve it myself? So all this information, this uh, valuable information is there at one fingertip. As Siemens guys, I, I assume you, you're already near to Mindsphere. Yes. So where do you see to IoT or the link to a tier portal? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, the, uh, um, the link to a Mindsphere is where you have the ticket or which might be automatically created out of the machine if the machine is capable. I've heard uh, you are connecting your machine with the S7-1500, uh, so that will be probably your face into that ecosystem. Yeah? You have the southbound more or less, and then you connect your machines and uh, about this yeah, machine connecting, uh, uh, tricking a ticket because there's an issue, you have the Mindsphere into the game. And uh, regarding TIA system, let's see. We need to speak with you and your uh, guys. Any let's see what Mindsphere has to say. <laughs> I, first of all, I have a, a totally different question. I really like the idea with this Kanban board. Mm -hmm. And how do you actually, I, I think, Kanban board by itself, how would it be prioritized, obviously? I mean, is someone looking at this? Or is it comes out of rules or, or some so uh, data? Uh, when you create a ticket, you can, uh, first of all, put the severity. Is it some, there's something, I hear some strange noise, somebody should look at some point of time. Or do I have a quality issue? Machine is working, but uh, a lot of uh, defects are happening on the product. Or is it really a breakdown? So I can set the severity. This uh, pops up on the Kanban board uh, as a severity. And also the maintenance supervisor, he gets the full transparency. Also for him, it's important to see where are my people working on? Are they working on the right cases? And he can see who is working on what. And he can also reassign tickets and say, look, you've overseen a priority here. Please uh, take over this ticket. So then humans would also uh, additionally they can. prioritize they can. tickets. So it's not like rule based or by uh, uh, analytics. Uh, uh, later error. stage, you can do this. Um, you can uh, become rule based. Um, also, the machines themselves can trigger alerts directly, but also the operator can uh, interact and uh, yeah, give feedback and uh, change the priority. But then I've seen the ticket creation, obviously, and is it also planned to have that machines uh, also automatically be connected to Mindsphere and might even create tickets? Sure, that's the intention. Definitely, it will yeah. cancel. It will be even faster than a WhatsApp call. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions, gentlemen? I have one last one. What would happen if you were not taken up by the accelerator? What's your plan B? Good question. The first Thank thing you. is uh, we would have to reflect why we haven't been taken. Yeah. Um, I think that we have to digest. But uh, I think uh, we are very uh, motivated and hard to frustrate. So I think uh, we would just take it uh, forward from there then. So no plan B yet? Maybe there is. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you very much, gentlemen, for your questions. Thank and you. once again, also to Fifth Industry for presenting here today. Thank you very much, guys. Much Thank luck. You. Thank and you. Uh, this is your applause. Robert, Sebastian, and Frank. And if you say, hey, their idea, I thought that was fantastic. Why don't you go to our voting website now, Siemens.com slash vote now, and vote for your team, who you think was the best. We've had three teams uh, so far. Xitazo, who are uh, also over there, presented first. You can vote for them also. Connectavo, and now Fifth Industry. Moving on to team number four. And by the way, if you just happen to join and are asking, what are we doing here? This is the so-called MindSphere Open Space Challenge. Uh, different solutions are presented here to our clients, actual use cases who are looking for the perfect solution. Maybe they'll find them here on stage. And how are you enjoying it so far, the jury? Yeah? Is it good? Yeah, I, I think sometimes it's a really nice intimate discussion here. I was just watching from, from, from afar people coming in thinking like, 
Are we allowed to get in? You are. We have some open seats right over here. Oh, that's the best part. That's oh, the best it? part. It's good that the mics aren't on. Kind of like it's... blending out the noise oh, just, yeah. just in the space here. That's what it's about. So let's move on to team number four, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. From Snap Support, here are Vilka Amboken and Madhu Augustine. Hey, Greg. How are you? So, welcome, gentlemen. Snap Support is the company. Tell us yes. a bit about uh, when you started it and uh, what, what uh, you guys are actually doing in the company. Sure. My name is Madhu Augustine. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Snap Support. Mm -hmm. We started about 18 months back in uh, California. When did you US? start? Sorry? 18 months. Oh, wow. Half years ago. Okay. In California? In California, yes. Right. Nice. And what, what, are you, uh, what are you do you do? We're both founders. So we started this together. Uh, and yeah, we, we are about 18 months old. We have uh, four customers using our system so far. It's been a wonderful journey. So when did you uh, uh, hear about the challenge? How long did it take you to come up with a solution? So we already had a solution which is very close to what uh, different Bakr is looking for. Mm -hmm. So we had to customize that or improve, uh, improve that to get to uh, what we need. So it took us, what, six weeks mm -hmm. to customize the system and to get to where it is right now. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Six weeks. Now you yeah. have 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So right. give it all you got. Enjoy. Thank, Thank you. you. So our solution is Smart Tickets. Uh, it's basically an intelligent ticketing system for equipment support. Um, we introduced us a little bit. Uh, our company is called Snap Support, and we started as a real-time and collaborative support system for instruments. We have four customers, uh, including uh, customers in life sciences and telecom. And there are 400 technicians using the system on a regular basis. We are located in Silicon Valley in California. So we believe uh, equipment manufacturers <laughs> Um, lack the right tools for supporting their sophistic sophisticated uh, equipment. And if you look at the evolution of machines, the machines have become very sophisticated, but the tools used to support the machines have not become very sophisticated. So there's a gap. And what that means is uh, they're using suboptimal tools for support, and that's resulting in loss productivity. So what we really need is a modern support system. A system that enables faster problem solving by empowering technicians with the right information and support at the right time. So that means they can get the right data from equipment, they can get access to knowledge base on the go using a phone, and they can even get proactive suggestions as to what they need to fix. And on top of that, they need real-time support for troubleshooting. So let's say they are on-site fixing a machine, and they have a question. So how do you get that answered? Today, what they do, they pick up the phone and call the team members to get support, and that may take time. Whereas what we have is a solution where they can get real-time support right on the spot. So Smart Ticket Solutions is a specialized ticketing system for equipment support. It's powered by mobile collaboration and analytics. So on the left side, you'll see uh, the machine being connected to MindSphere, which is then connected to our platform. So that means we can pull in data in real time and even create tickets um, based on what we see from the data automatically. And on the right side, you have the users. So you have the plant operator, uh, the manager, the technicians, and even third-party service providers all collaborating on the same ticket to solve the issue. And the system can also connect to ERP systems and field service management systems to get data in real time, like part numbers, uh, the list of parts, all that can come from different systems. And in the middle, we have this platform, which is primarily a mobile app connected to a cloud platform. And then we also have the reward system built in and a planned dashboard that can be placed anywhere. It could be on the phone, it could be on, the, on a monitor like this, so you can place it anywhere. So how it works is pretty straightforward. Uh, you create a ticket either by scanning or automatically based on alerts from MindSphere. Um, and then you collaborate and get support to solve the issue. And then finally, depending on your participation, you get rewarded. So first step, creating a ticket is very easy. So all you do is either scan a code using your phone, or you can even walk up to a machine. So we 
our, we can enable machines with eye beacons, which is a Bluetooth low energy device. So as you walk towards the machine, you can automatically see the machine information on your phone. You don't even need to scan. And then you can create a ticket. And then you can add pictures or videos to better explain the problem if you need to. And then finally, uh, assign a priority and send it. And uh, for participation in the system, they can get tickets. So for creating a ticket, you can get uh, points. And you can get unlocked different badges uh, based on uh, the, the number of points they get. And then finally, there are leaderboards. And you can even have weekly challenges and stuff to incentivize people uh, to participate in the system. Another key feature of our system is intelligent assignment. So based on the ticket, based on the machine type and the issue type, we can assign the case or the ticket automatically to the right team members. So you don't even have to wait for people to come and join. So we can assign automatically. And if people don't respond within a certain time frame, we can escalate the issue to the next level automatically. So that means the technician is always going to get a response. They don't have to wait and um, hope for uh, support from the team members. And the model is based on uh, a global uh, model where it can be configured for different time zones as well. And as I mentioned previously, you can get asset information directly from MindSphere. And you can also get diagnostic data and process it uh, to create tickets automatically and send data back to MindSphere for future predictive analytics uh, types of exercises. So collaboration is a key piece of our system. Uh, once a case is created, different team members uh, from the planned operator side, from Diefenbacher, even from third-party service providers can come together to collaborate. They can chat, they can send images, videos, uh, all using the phone. And then if, they ha if the technician has a question when on-site, they can do a live video with the team members if needed. They can show exactly what's going on with the machine. So that means they don't have to wait for support. They can get support live when they are on site. And we even have Google Glass integration if they need to get instructions live on the phone, on the, on the device. So that means you can work hands-free. <laughs> Monitoring and alerts. Uh, so on the phone, you have a dashboard. And you can clearly see where the cases are, where the issues are. And just touch on that issue. And you can see the details of uh, that issue with the machine. And finally, uh, dashboards to see exactly what the issues are, how many issues are there, and the, and the dashboard. So I don't have to explain the key benefits. I think you already know. Uh, so basically, it's increased productivity, less downtime, and finally, increased customer satisfaction. So this is a quick demo video of the system. It's actually a working mobile app. So this is the process where the technician is actually creating a ticket. And it's e either using iBeacon or in this case we are showing it with a QR code. As you can see, it's very easy to create a ticket. Just get some information in there and submit it across. Here's the dashboard, the leaderboard. All that information is very easy to access on the mobile device. It's getting here. That's where the document library was. So that's a quick demo. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. That was Vika thank and you. Madhu. And um, also, I think a very nice uh, uh, presentation here on say I enjoyed it very much. How did you like it? It was quite interesting. Um, I mean, I have one or two questions. Um, what's your team size? We are a team of 10 people, so we are the co-founders, and we have developers in the team. Who owns the company? We both. We both do. And I have a question. While, while talking, I wasn't writing uh, WhatsApp messages, but I was rather Googling you guys. <laughs> and um, because I'm always quite interested in that. So 
I automatically was led to Snapchat. So how is that an issue for you guys? Because Snap support kind of leads me to Snapchat. Is that an issue you're handling? Uh, it, we are catching up. So initially when people search for Snap support, it always went to Snap, uh, Snapchat. And we never even showed up on the first page. But now we show up second. So we are improving. And I think hopefully over time, we'll become the first in Google when you okay. search. And are you venture backed? We are not. We have raised some money. Uh, from uh, angel investors, so we haven't taken VC money. Yeah, but yet. over the next six months, one of our goals is to raise capital. But you guys are the prime owners, so to speak. Yep. Correct. Yeah. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, who is a question? Go for it, Stefan. Two questions. Uh, number one regarding the uh, live chat. Is it just between everyone who is right now locked into the system? Maybe in terms of Diefenbacher or the, let's say, staff members or technicians? Or is it also maybe that there's like a central, I don't know, service team, whatever? How yeah. is it planned? Yeah, yeah okay. as long as you're part of the account. So if you are part of the Diefenbacher account, everybody in there can be part of that chat. Yeah. Or the client, right? So it really depends on what the issue is and who is assigned. But if you need to assign more people, you can assign them, or people can come and join the case as well if they want to help out. And the chat is between everyone who is on the ticket. So they, they really need to be online, available, and whoever is there who can just between each other. No, it's, it's not a chat room per se. It's, it works offline as well, so you don't need to be on the system. Okay. So it's like WhatsApp. You can chat, okay. you can go away, come yes. back, and see what's going All right. on. Yeah. And you get notifications. Okay. It's enabled with okay. notifications. Notifications are yes. yeah. yeah. Now I got it. Thanks. Um, second, did you already do any type of proof of concept in terms of MindSphere? How you, I, I have seen the concept. It looked great, actually, on, on your slide. Any experiences already in your, in your company? So we have experience with the AWS IoT Core. Uh, we haven't uh, tried MindSphere yet. We don't have access. So as soon as we have access, we'll start developing. <laughs> yeah, enough. Yeah. I, I see you're still unsure about something. I have the feeling there's something happening. You're thinking away. <laughs> but if, if you have a question, Mike, well, if you don't have any questions, that's also OK. Um, I have one question. Do you think about enriching a ticket with online data from the, from the PLC or from the line, IoT data? So when you create a ticket that you directly get pull data out of the PLC and say, OK, this was the current of that motor, which is making a noise. Right. So the reason we call it a smart ticket, it's like a live ticket. So it can contain data from uh, the instrument. So we collect that. It can contain data from previous cases. So if you have knowledge base, we can automatically search and include relevant information to the case. So it's like a living uh, collaboration space. The ticket is a living collaboration space with data from all those places. So. Yeah, I don't we, we, we even have a chatbot. <laughs> we even have a chatbot component to it. So we, we look at history, and if you enter an issue and there is a history for that issue, the chatbot comes up as an option to help you out as well. Do you have kind of a dashboard to see activities of last week? Let's say. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yes. We can show you live as well. So after the after the presentation, we can do a demo. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank Any you. other questions? Thank you. Oh, sorry, I'm fine. No, question. I'm fine. Go for thank it. you. Thank you. Okay. No, no, I was <laughs> sorry about that. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. All right. Thank so, you. everything clear? All right. Our jury says thank you, and we do also. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate Enjoy you. the rest of the day, and much luck to you. That was Snap Support, our fourth team here of the day. And once again, I'd like everybody to go to cmens.com slash vote now to vote for your favorite team. Once again, going through uh, the order uh, in, in, uh, in the, the, the order we started off with, Xitazo here today was the first team, Connectav with the second, fifth industry, third, and Snap Support we just saw now. So if you liked any of these presentations, go and support them. Once again, I think this is a, a great opportunity for on the one side, our clients, of course, um, but also for our developers to get to showcase their ideas. Because besides the presentation here on stage, they will also be uh, available in the open space area at their tables throughout the entire day if you want more information about the solutions they have to offer. So let's move on to team number five. From Easy Software, please welcome Marcel Rosenbaum. Marcel, welcome. Hey. Nice to be here. Nice, nice of you to be here. Now, we've had teams on stage so far. Are you a one-man show here? Yes, 
that's right. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, the other guy uh, wants to be here on part on the stage is uh, ill. So okay. I must be alone. Okay, so, so tell us a bit about your company, Easy Software. When was it founded and where are you from? Uh, it's uh, founded in uh, 1991 or so, so. Oh, really? Okay. Not a, not a startup. In yeah. The, but uh, we start up with a digitalization, um, I, I will say, with a cloud digitalization in two years ago. Uh, and it's based in Mülheim. Mm -hmm. It's uh, near Essen in the Ruhrgebiet. Oh, yeah, we know that. And um, yeah, it's, it's nice to be there. So uh, why did you take on the challenge? Um, why did you say, hey, that sounds like something we can provide a solution to? Because um, we have a lot of experience in building processes. And uh, the IoT and the processes in the cloud, they match together. And okay. we see IoT is very important for the industry, but also the process know-how that we have since 20 years. And we think it's a good idea to combine these both together. 20 years of experience on stage here, 15 minutes to impress our jury. Go for it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, Marcel Rosenbaum, my name, from Easy Software Mülheim, as we hear before. Um, let's take a look. In the area before digitalization, we also offer our customers great service. We offer great services with great products and with employees. But with digitalization, we can offer them also tools. Tools that can connect the processes from the uh, customers to the processes of the company. And that's what we can do here. And we believe there are three important things what we have to think about when we build the solutions. And what these things are, th three things are, I want to tell you after the slide. Um, first of all, I want to show you the ticket process, what we have here. So um, first of all, we want to create a ticket over QR code over or over the machine directly. Uh, we want to categorize it. We want to add additional information. Um, values from the machine or even photos or whatever is necessary and then start the ticketing process. That's what we do then and then after this we can also monitor what we do there. So that's also important for the guy who gives us the ticket, what's the state, who's working on it and what's happened there. Now came back to these three things and we think these th three things are integration, business logic, and a multi-user experience. So, start with the integration. Integration means we need to integrate with the devices, with the machines. And this integration comes over MindSphere. We connect to MindSphere, we get all the values that are necessary, we can implement the rules in the MindSphere platform to trigger when a device is healthy or not. And that's what we can see then. It's also possible to integrate in the MindSphere platform a command to trigger then the ticket system and say, okay, this machine is not healthy, please help me, make some service, do some maintenance, repair me, I don't know what to do. And the other thing about integration is you also have to integrate other systems like ERP systems, CRM systems or um, DMS systems. Why is it also important? Because most of the information from your customers not stored in the devices, they're stored in these other systems. And then we came to the second part, the business objects, the business logic. We need to combine these. We need to combine the data from the uh, MindSphere, from the device, with the data from the ERP systems or CRM systems. And that's what we can do here in the Easy Cloud platform. We combine these information, we build new business objects that are um, designed for the customer outside, for the app that he's using, and bring this from the ERP system, from the MindSphere, over the platform to the device. And the next thing is about multi-user experience. What does this mean? Um, today we are talking about an app, perhaps on a smartphone or on a tablet. But that's not all. I think in six months we are talking about a watch. In eight months we are talking about glasses. We're talking about a HoloLens. We're talking about a web client. We're talking about a desktop client. It's not only about an app. And why not asking Alexa when you came to the office, hey, Alexa, are my devices healthy? Is everything fine here? And how we can do this with this platform, we show you now in a short showcase. Oh. Small problem here with the connection. Now 
jetzt aber kurz bis No problem. I have three minutes to go, so everything's fine. <laughs> okay, here we have the... Um, uh, can we switch the monitor? It's the wrong monitor here. We do this way. So it looks like okay, ready to go. Well, you save this. One. That's live. I have to find my mouse. But <laughs> ah, here it comes. Okay, let's start with the ticket process. So first of all, uh, we have to scan the QR code from the device, and um, I do this here. And uh, with a look up to the Mindsphere platform, we can realize which device it is. And now we have something like a device, uh, like a file from the device. We see here the information of this device. We see here it's a press, and um, we also can take a look which open tickets we have in here, because it could be possible that the device gives us a ticket, or it's also possible that another employee gives us a ticket. So we can check it here and take a look and see, okay, here's something interesting in. And now I can see here what's working on this project, what's happened here with this ticket, who has created it, what's working on here, and I got my informations. And um, when I go back, it's also possible here to make a self-service, so um, if I'm not really sure what I should do on this machine, I can have here some tutorials to, to know about something about it, and also take a look here at the manual from the um, from the product so I can have more information to yeah, get more detailed from the, uh, from the system. And now we start with a ticket process. Um, we make this as easy as it's going. So the only thing we need is text. That's the minimum what we need here because we want to make it to a low level that employees give us the tickets. Um, and when we go in here, we can type in here some text. And as you see here, I got credits. So we have this gamification about the credits. So you see here three from 12 tickets. And when I want to submit it now, it's also possible in this moment. I see, OK, that's not, not that bad made. But you can do a little bit more. Perhaps you want to give us some more information, and then you get more credits. So in this case, I give you more and I type in some information. Uh, in this case, we decide to make here some uh, um, issue types, some maintenance levels, or if it's a blocker or not. But the input here, what you do here, uh, you can configure. You configure, configure for each machine which points you want to see here. And even when I'm now here on Submit, I see it's better, 9 from 12. And the last of this, I can also add here some information, some photos from the photo gallery, or I can pick up from my phone. And at the end of the day, when I submit it now, I have all things done. I have 12 from 12. And when I now take a look on my, oh, here, on my profile, I can see I have 440 points at all. I see my tickets, and I can redeem it now. And I don't know what your bonus program is. Is it about an Amazon gift? Is it about money? Oh, I don't know what you want to give your employees when they give you enough tickets. Yes, that's all from our ticket system app. And now I'm happy for your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marcel Rosenbaum. An applause for you from Easy Software. Sorry about the little technical problem there, but you went through that nicely. That's, That's the way normal. to go. There's That's not a problem that we can't fix, and we'll do it in the mix while well, we're not rapping now. Now we're asking questions. So, Daniel. That was sweet. Huh? <laughs> well done. That was really good as well. Thank you. Um, I have two questions. Um, number one is, well, I can see you're an AG. So how many employees do you roughly have? Uh, 300. And I just Googled your company, as I like doing, and I could see that the stock was going up. 
Yeah. How come? What's well? Congratulations on that. And how come? <laughs> um, yeah, it's. I think. I think the the stock market sees that we go to the cloud business, that we go to high scaling business, that we have the right solutions for the digitalization. We are good prepared for the future. We think. And what's your job? Uh, I'm responsible for the Easy Cloud platform. Okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Who of you has a question, please? Yeah, obviously you have a really ready solution. Congratulations, yeah. And Thank you very much. In which industries are you at the moment? In the moment we are in the um, <laughs> IT business, because they also have such processes, but the devices are a little bit different. And we are in the heating system uh, industry. So we have such a solution for 3,000 heating systems out. Um, they send us the information, we can control them, and we also have the uh, initial operation process built on the app for a, a heating system vendor. Um, you already mentioned that you are like 300 um, um, yeah, <laughs> we developers in, in your company, so how close are you working then like with a client like Diefenbacher then to this is a more or less uh, fixed, ready uh, to, to use solution. How do you work then with like Diefenbacher to uh, get to their special needs and yeah. uh, to, to solve their, their company challenge then? Yeah. What, what we saw here, it's, yeah, right, you're right, it's ready to use, but normally no one uses it this way. Why not? Uh, normally companies have their special things they want to have to build in. The, spo the process is a little bit different. So we take this as a uh, template and then we go to the uh, partner, we go to the company, we talk together which are the special needs that you have and then build a special app only for Diefenbacher because that's what we realize, no one wants this app as a standard. But one, one thing, we are not 300 developers. We wish okay. we have 300 okay. developers, but it's com employees complete. 300 employees, okay. Then one other question, uh, you, were the, you mentioned uh, the connection between the different systems like ERP, live data from PLCs, etc. Um, can you maybe explain a little bit more in detail how you would then like to leverage uh, even analytics, uh, not just the combination of the data, how do you really want to address then uh, taking advantage out of these cloud-based systems in terms of analytics and others? Um, yeah, we, we we, we do not store all information in our cloud. It's possible to do this, but mostly we connect to other devices. And what we can do then, we can, um, yeah, we, we can read these information that is necessary for us. We have own analytics modules in our platform. We can also use outstanding modules for analytics. And then we can make an intelligent combination of these uh, different values that we have in there. Uh, we have standard modules to connect, also to Siemens MindSphere, also to SAP. And there's a module market, you can choose your uh, uh, connection you want, and then we can build up the business logic you need, and uh, also the analytics you want. Okay, thank you. Mike? Yeah. Uh, I have one question you mentioned also on one slide, uh, where you have the MindSphere Cloud and also the Easy Cloud Platform. Right. So you have also your own cloud platform, so you right. need two cloud platforms for your solutions, so the MindSphere and the Easy Cloud Platform. Uh, and I'm what is the separation between those two cloud platforms in your uh, application? So what is stored in the MindSphere, what is stored in your yeah. uh, cloud platform? At the end of the day, I think we are talking about a lot of more cloud solutions than only two, yeah. because um, SAP or Microsoft is perhaps also in the cloud, so we believe in multi-cloud solutions in the future, that's what we believe in. Um, and um, what's stored in the, in the original system is you can define. We have it's such called transparent classes. So we define the business model in our platform, and then you can decide, store the data on our platform or read the data live from other systems or, or from the Siemens MindSphere. It depends on the uh, times you need for the, uh, for the access. So when it has to be very fast, then I think it's easier when we have it all in system. When we have a little bit latency, then it's better to store it in the other system or when the data is too big. And what is the difference? Um, MindSphere is an IoT platform. We are not. We are not able to handle IoT in this case. But we are a process platform. We can build business objects. We can add processes to these business objects. And that's what we can do. And that is our unique selling point uh, from the Easy Cloud platform. Thank you. More questions? Uh, as you have uh, obviously experienced, do you see a difference in requirements on international business? So 
is there a need to have a different app in Asia than in Europe or in uh, North America? <laughs> yes, of course, the encoding should be another bit different. But um, no, from the process, it's nearly the same. But uh, what we also realized, um, especially when you go to the US market, it's a little bit different how the people work with these apps, how the people work with this data. That could be different. So um, it's also important to look at the people who work for, uh, with these apps. But from the technical side, it's nearly the same. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. That was Marcel Rosenbaum. Thank you, thank you Marcel, from Easy Software. And once again, your chance now to vote for your team. Go to Siemens.com slash vote now and uh, yeah, give them your support. We've had uh, five teams so far. Xitazo starting it off, then Connectable, Fifth Industry, Snap Support, Easy Software. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to move on to our next and last team team, and uh, they are from CodeCentric and UXNI. Please welcome Konrad Pöpke and Tom Allison. Welcome, guys. Thanks. Nice to have you. Yeah, give them some support here. All right. First time on stage, first time in front of uh, such a large audience here? Yes. Yes. All right. <laughs> yes. Are we excited or frightened? We'll figure 50 that 50. out. 50-50, <laughs> also a fair answer. So tell us a bit about uh, the combination here. Um, Code-centric and UXNI. Basically, uh, two companies together. We are involved in an initiative, a, a, a studio, a digital innovation studio. Okay. It's a co-venture between these two companies. Okay. So we are located in Berlin, right. and we do co-located digital products. Okay. It, With designers and developers together. That's... Exactly. And maybe a little background of the history, CodeCentric, we are uh, experts in custom agile software development. Uh, and uh, we're working a, a long time already with uh, UX and I together, uh, like five years. Um, and uh, we have the experience of the UX, UI, and the uh, agile software development together in projects. And now we're combining it in an integrated uh, um, Studio approach. Yeah, we essentially embody this joint venture. Conrad is from CodeCentric and I'm from UXNI. You seem to be a great team, so we're excited <laughs> to hear what you got to say. Go for it. Okay, thanks. So uh, I think we all saw the, the challenge. Uh, we want to have these awesome machines full of IoT devices uh, connected to Mindsphere Cloud run smoothly. And uh, we have the, this, uh, this case as, such, uh, as a basis, the client briefing. So what did we do? We used our biggest weapon we have, yellow stickies. <laughs> so we just uh, put five uh, uh, a team of five developers and designers into the room for one day, did the design sprint, and tried to came up with a concept, with a good idea, how to solve the challenge. So uh, we had the client briefing. We uh, tried to emphasize with the user who, would be, who, who could be the user, maybe Harold, who is 60, who is almost before retirement. He's uh, not used to using smartphones. He even has the Nokia, you know? And uh, Peter, who is uh, an external Diefenbacher expert uh, technician, while Harold is just a, a machine operator. So Peter is 35, is used to smartphones, and likes to share knowledge. So uh, we used it to create wireframes, mockups, and created this uh, high f fidelity prototype with Envision. So let's assume Harold is walking uh, next to a machine, and uh, the MindSphere uh, platform creates uh, uh, some hotspot where uh, they identify through predictive maintenance where uh, um, Harold needs to take a look. So Harold got from his boss this new awesome app, but he's not really liking it. So uh, he walks next to the, f uh, to the machine, and then uh, uh, the app identifies his position, uses a near field communication, and then says, hey, Harold, go take a look. Maybe there's something wrong. So he go goes there and sees, oh, maybe there is uh, some noisy motor. OK, maybe I need, need to do something. OK, smart as app. Let's uh, identify the component, either through image recognition or through, through scanning a QR code. So, um, because uh, Harold is used to calling the Diefenbacher hotline uh, and getting all his solutions, uh, he's really happy that this app can even uh, uh, take a short video, take a photograph, or even use um, uh, AWS transcribe to transfer his audio into the description. He even has the top three problems of this component. 
So he can just check, in, uh, check the problem he knows and then uh, create a ticket. So he gets the solutions recommendation, uh, recommendations for this problem he has. He can even order parts if it's necessary and he can rate it. Is it good? Is it bad? Unfortunately, he goes through all solutions and nothing happens. He needs to uh, reassign it. So he escalates the ticket to Peter. Uh, our AI assignment figures out that uh, uh, Peter is next to the plant. He's, uh, he has time, he has even the right skill level, so he gets assigned in with a higher priority and goes to the plant. Then he checks the history, what has Harald already done. Uh, he has more solutions he can try out because he's an expert. He's the Mag MacGyver at the, of Diefenbacher, Diefenbacher and has, has even access to a detailed plans so or even an augmented reality view to view the digital twin. But no solution works. But, he like, uh, but he's MacGyver, he uses a chewing gum and then fixes the problem. And he adds it to, 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 the, uh, to the pool of solutions for this problem. And he goes uh, back home and Harold and uh, Peter both see in their uh, tickets they worked on that they helped, that they helped to run the machine smoothly. So this is our smooth operator, uh, I need to train that, uh, with a lot of features and they, uh, it makes Peter and Harold happy. So, Tom, I think, awesome, let's code. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a terrific team effort. Uh, the coding does seem like the next logical step, but nope, not our plan. We're fundamentally opposed to bad software and the practices that lead to them. So, on spec solutions, uh, such as the challenge in this contest, leaves no time for user research or iterative development. These bad habits are unfortunately quite common in the industry, and uh, they lead to a high fa failure rate. So I, we think that the uh, customers should also be concerned about this, because you can spend a good deal of money on a spec-like project building something that folks like Harold just complain about and work around. In other words, bad software gets in the way rather than helping, your, the biz, benefiting your business. So, while we presented you with some cool speculative solutions to the challenge, we wouldn't recommend building any of them. They are evidence of creativity, yes. Uh, our real proposal however, is that you include yourself as the client, that you get to know the user and that you build iteratively. That's how we work in the digital innovation studio. And you can come talk to us over at our booth for details. I'm checking my time. This is a diagram that we can explain to you in more detail. It basically starts with loving the user's problem and we show you how to get to products that users love. And it starts with understanding in depth who the user is. So for example, uh, I don't think we've seen, we, we showed you a speculative persona, but we would start with personas based on real data um, and then work in an iterative and incremental way to great products, all with the client involved. Especially with gamification, you really need to understand the needs of the user. You don't want to do, uh, let them do uh, what the uh, you don't want to them to just do stuff to earn money, for example. You need to understand the need, because gamification is just, just amplifying uh, uh, the need or the motivation. And if you motivate the wrong thing, you will have the wrong behavior you don't want. Yeah, and we can go into that in more detail. I think gamification is often misunderstood, but um, we've definitely got some good ideas about it. Uh, thank you, and we invite you to come with us and build successful products uh, that, users, that your users will love. So that was our rather complicated response to the challenge. <laughs> um, thanks a lot. We have, a, as I said before, uh, a booth and we will be happy to go into the more depth about process and what we're up to in Berlin with the studio. Um, Thank you. I'd like to give <laughs> one final quick shout out to our colleague oh. at CodeCentric, Nils Vloka, who will be presenting an example of CodeCentric's expertise with, with MindSphere on this stage 
later for the comp challenge. Uh, so just that's my last thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, thank you very much, Tom and Konrad from CodeCentric and UXNI. <laughs> Loving the user's problem. How did you like it and what do you have to ask? Well, I, I found the first part really intriguing and the second part you kind of lost me because, okay, to, to be quite honest, at the first part, the feeling was really focused and more or less ready to go and at the end it seemed it's not ready to go. So kind of help me with that confusion. How far are you? How long will it take? So of the ideas that we presented, as I, no, I'm, how I'm, far I'm are they? How long would it take? No, wait, I'm confused. Yeah. It seemed as if you have a product that's ready to go from what I was listening to you. Uh, and listening to you, it sounds like it's an idea. So help me on this. Actually, it's not a uh, product re uh, ready to go because we didn't talk to any users. We don't validate it. We just uh, came up with it on a speculative basis. So is it based on a product and you have to adapt it to the customer's needs? No, it's custom software development. So okay. it would be in MindSphere's app, which needs to be built. And whom are we dealing with? Both of you? One of you? Both of us. Both, uh, the power of both companies combined. At any given time? Um, yes, while uh, the design part is upfront uh, with a higher uh, uh, involvement than with development. So uh, there is uh, some switching gears involved, but um, in the most uh, of the time, it's, it's, uh, the requirements are driven by uh, UX, by the user's needs. And, 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 and last question from me before I hand over to the, to the other gentleman. I like the name Smooth Operator, but are you sure you could use it? Exactly not. <laughs> that was sure a that very precise sure answer. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Thank our you. point. Okay. Um, yeah. Please. Would you expect that it's easy to, to introduce a system like that to, to our customers? Or do you think there will be a cultural change? Like your example with, with Harold, who is just before his retirement. Will he work with something like that? Yeah, so the dimension of culture and the specifics of uh, what surrounds the actual application are what we're saying is very important to get to know before we try to design solutions. So that's our main point. We do think that you can't design a solution without understanding the problem at the level of Harald or whomever. So, so yeah. understanding Harald is the key to understand uh, Harold and uh, his workplace, how he works, where he works, is it a noisy environment, is, uh, what kind of tools does he need, and so on. It's uh, increasing the success chance, so you have this culture change. Okay, Mike? Um, I have one question. In the use case you showed with the light bulb, mm -hmm. all the interaction to describe the issue that you have with the machine was an interaction with the user. Mm -hmm. So you didn't, there was no way, at least I didn't see it, where you use the machine data which is in the MindSphere. So this whole valuable data that you have and all of the interaction has been a description by the user what he sees with his own eyes. Um, do you have also planned to use the data that the machine generates and which place does this kick in? And uh, if not, why do you need MindSphere? <laughs> <laughs> uh, MindSphere can be used for automatic ticket creation and uh, can enhance all the data you, you, you have to the, for the component. So for example, there was one screen with, with um, Peter, where he had the technical drawings and so on, and augmented reality, digital twin. So everything that uh, there you can position all the MindSphere data to just uh, help the technician. Yeah, I mean, just clearly. Because the documentation is not a data the machine generates. That is also that something that the machine builder generates or the suppliers who have parts in the machine. So this is data that's there, that's fixed, that's static, but the dynamic data comes from the machine. And so at which, at which point do you use the dynamic data from the machine, like currents, uh, vibration levels, stuff like this? Mm -hmm. That's where uh, the augmented reality part came in with the uh, digital twin. So actually we w wanted to have one screen with a 3D uh, display with uh, all the uh, live uh, dynamic data. But it, we, we ju just started like two weeks ago, so. And I'd just like to point out, since I'm the one with the more negative, we, we see a lot of potential in the technology. We're just pointing out that it needs, we need to understand the problem really well in order to <coughs> capture that, tech, that potential fully.
you don't want Harold to throw the smartphone away and go to the telephone hotline again. I mean, in, in looking at this challenge, we heard many stories like that, that people have been implementing ticket systems for a while now, and that the problem is that the Harolds or the other don't use them. Um, so that's where the problem we're trying to solve, that, that it's actually useful for her. Okay, we have a question here. Yeah, um, thank you first of all for your presentation. I certainly like the idea coming from the user problem and uh, creating all these user roles, uh, obviously, to address uh, this uh, issue. Can you actually give me a little bit more information how, how, how deeply already did you look into MindSphere? What's your experience with MindSphere so far so that I can get a certain impression how this uh, solution will be then tied to MindSphere later on? So uh, Niels has a wonderful demo, live demo, connecting to him, uh, through uh, Minds, uh, the Kampf machine uh, through MindSphere. All right, so we can see this later. Right, yeah, great. so uh, w uh, we Thanks. as a company built uh, or working on the multiple uh, MindSphere apps uh, on MindSphere 3.0 even. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. So this concludes the Q&A. Thank you once again to our jury and also to our last team here, CodeCentric and UXNI. Thank All you. All right. Thank you guys. Your applause. And um, the jury is going to take their time now, about uh, five minutes, I suppose, to evaluate what solution they think is best for our client, Diefenbaha. And guys, you can stay right on stage here because oh. I'd like to have every tier four. Our team, yeah. All right, and uh, everybody was happy with, with, with your presentation? Yeah? I hope so. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We'll see what the jury has to say. How about you guys? Yeah, it was a lot of fun and uh, to present here on stage, the dialogue with the, with the jury afterwards. That was pretty cool to see how deep they dig in already after just a short pitch of seven, eight minutes. So what's up after this? Anything planned already? Any events? Any uh, uh, pitches? Uh, certainly. I will actually pitch today again at a startup fair right here on an open trade fair. So oh, I have oh, like that. four hours to go. Busy, busy, busy. How about our guys here from California? We are feeling great. It was a great presentation and great to see other companies working on the same problem as well. So Is this your first visit to Hanover, to the Hanover yes, fair? Yes, yeah, first way? visit. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. And you enjoying it so far? Great experience so far. How about our gentleman over here in the back? Uh, together with Connect it was a great experience. I think the questions were pretty spot on. Uh, getting also direct feedback from people who will actually use the solution in the field or who have a what, better grasp on it. What is more difficult? Is it actually the presentation or is it more the part afterwards, standing here and waiting for questions that might not be comfortable at first? I think the most difficult part is building a product that people want to use huh? or right. building a company around right. it. So right. the pitch is uh, not that difficult. So it's all part of the game. It's all part of the business. And also, Marcel, here one last time, how was your experience? That was very nice today. Um, a little bit nervous when you go to stage and relax when you go out. That's, That's part of the job. All right. That's as it is. That's what you sign up for. Exactly. But very good job to all our participants. So we have the uh, winner from our online voting. Like I said before, uh, there are two um, yeah, winners, so to say, maybe, maybe just one. But for on the one side, the audience has the chance to vote for their favorite team. And of course, our jury has the chance to vote for their favorite team, which might be the more important one. Um, but this is also a fantastic prize since, like I said before, the online winner will go to the next Minds for Conference in September. And the winner is Xitazo for the online voting. Congratulations. This is your ticket. Two and three. So. Um, that's that, and um, I think we're just about ready to welcome the jury back. Not yet. She's like, no, we're not ready. Okay, we're not ready yet. Anyway, what will we be doing here afterwards, ladies and gentlemen? We still have some presentations that will be taking place here throughout the day. We're talking about different topics um, from all aspects, uh, all areas that uh, Siemens is in, of course. Um, additive manufacturing, energy for industry, uh, aerospace, for example. We'll be talking to our expert right after this about SenseFormer, Born Connected. This is something we just launched here recently uh, this morning together with um, Dr. Beatrix Natta and uh, Cedric Naike. And uh, this is something that you shouldn't miss. We'll be getting to that in about, I'd say, 10 minutes, uh, roughly. But besides that, once again, uh, maybe we could take a picture. Is our photographer here? Take a picture of the entire team. We didn't get a chance to do that yet. That'd also be great. So if you could put on your best smile here. All right.
There we go. Give us that smile, give us that smile. Should I go in the middle? All right. Turn it magical. We need some applause here from the audience to get us going here. Make some noise, make some noise, make some noise. Make some noise. <laughs> So, fantastic. All right. Thank you once again. And uh, we're kind of anxious to see what the jury has to say. Just so you know, the, the, winning, the winning team now will get the chance to actually work together with our client on uh, the, the challenge, on the problem they actually posed at the beginning. So this is a real opportunity here for our developers. Besides that, I think it's a, a fantastic opportunity anyway to be able to present yourselves on a stage like this is something you're probably not uh, uh, going to get the chance to do every day, but who knows, you know? I mean, this might be the start into, you know, the next big thing. We all know how things start, sometimes in a garage, all right? Sometimes uh, uh, on the toilet seat, you never know, all right? Or the best idea might pop up, and sometimes it is the stage here at the Hanover Mesa. So looking over to our jury once again, are we ready? We are ready. All right. This is the moment everybody's been waiting for. So uh, we'll get uh, a microphone back to Daniel Kronen, our pitch professor, in just a couple of seconds. And he will then tell us who the actual winner is. So welcome back to the jury. You guys took your time. And uh, Daniel's going to join me on stage here in just a couple of moments. Tell us how difficult it was to actually evaluate and to find out who was best fitting for our client. Yeah, it was a bit of a challenge. It was a bit of a discussion. Um, first of all, hello. I'm enjoying the way you're welcoming me. Could I have a bit of an applause, please? This is Daniel. I'm, 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 I'm really enjoying the love. Thank you so much. Heartfelt love, yes, <laughs> thank you. So we had a bit of a discussion, and um, we, we were kind of de de deciding what are we going to focus, because we had this huge variety from all, from all aspects of life. And we decided we're going to focus heavily on the idea. Mm -hmm. um, and heavily on, on a team that may, might be in somewhat of an early stage. But especially the client said, no, no, I'm really curious about the idea. I believe in people. And I'm curious to see where it's going to go. And we have a winner. We have a winner. We have a winner. Should we announce the winner? I, I think that'd be the right time. You guys are just waiting for it, huh? Uh, shaky, so. shaky, shaky. All right. Let me stand here that I can, that I can look into happy faces somewhat. So the winner... Dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun, yes. dun, dun, is... It's a part where the excitement comes on. And when you say on. the name, I want everybody to cheer and just freak out as if your favorite pop star was on stage, all right? I'm loving the excitement and the faces. <laughs> and the winner is... Fifth Industry, congratulations. Fifth, Fifth Industry. Industry. Gentlemen, did, come did, up did, front. Congratulations. So that's, congratulations. Well done. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. And congratulations. There, so welcome. All We'd right. I'd also like to get to the client on stage. Please do join us. And gentlemen, Mr. Kuhnekam from Diefenbach. Now this so, is for you. You'll hold on to this. You might want to hold it. The three of you might want to stand in the middle. You might want to and it'd be us. great if we could get one more picture here. That'd be fantastic. And smile right that way. Get used to that feeling. And you give it a thumbs up if you have a good, good picture. And I'd like to have one round of applause for our winners, Fifth Industry. Give it up, give it up. And of course, to all participants. So, I have to ask, were you expecting this? Actually not, no. It was a really tough competition and uh, it's really amazing uh, to be here and also we were happy to participate and now we're also winning. It's an uh, awesome feeling. Great. So, what better feeling could you have, right? You come, you don't know, you pitch, you'll see, yeah. you wait and I, hey, now it's time to work, right? Totally relieved and the work's gonna start now, yes. All right. So, congratulations once again to our winners. Mr. Kunnekam, would you like to say something? Yeah, we are excited to, to work with you, and, but I definitely with others of you too, I think there were really great ideas under all of that. And yeah, I will sit together with my colleagues, which are still online, and uh, find out who will invite to Eppingen. I assume most of you. All right.
So thank you very much also for being part of this, for submitting the challenge, and to our audience also for being so fantastic. Our jury, once again, for the competence, for the questions, and also, of course, the love and the passion. So once again, MindSphere Open Space Challenge, that was our second one this week. We'll be having another one uh, this afternoon. So if you uh, want to tune in again then, then's the time. So ladies and gentlemen, with this said, have a nice day. Stay here with us. We're going to continue with the next presentation in a couple of minutes. And once again, thank you to all participants and developers here.